Yeah. You let me geek up. You rocking the dog? Concrete what it is, man. man. What the business is. All right. Hey, man, appreciate you for coming through, rocking with us, Discover Studios, man. It's a pleasure having you, good. man. It's all good. Discover, I'm in this bitch, man. <laughs> hey, for the people on my channel who don't know you, bro, go ahead and introduce yourself. Man, what the business is, man. It's your boy, Concrete K. I'm in this bitch live in the D right now, but I'm from that ranch, man. Shreveport, Louisiana. I'm in this bitch rocking out, man. What's up? Already, already. First and foremost, before we kick this shit off, man, welcome home, bro. Appreciate it, man. Feel good, man. A blessing. <laughs> Big blessing, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, man, I, I, I'm tapped in with the Streetport music scene. I interview hella Streetport artists, you know what I'm saying? But for the people on my channel, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and describe Streetport, Louisiana, specifically your side, like, you know, the Queensboro. Man, it's just like rugged shit. Just like, it's like basically like any other hood. I mean, it's... You know, every every place got got its perks of how it is, but yeah. it's basically like every other hood. This bitch is rugged. You know, you got you got the everybody that's looking for a way out. Whether you hustling, doing what you're doing, you doing music, playing sports. You yeah. know, it's just like any other hood, man. It's real rugged though. Yeah. yeah. And one thing, every street part of artist I interviewed, they said the same thing. But one thing that they did say, you know what I'm saying. Unfortunately, it's it's a lot of a crab in the bucket mentality when it comes to the music scene in Shreveport. Right. I know you've been, you know what I'm saying, you, you had to sit down for a little bit, but how do you feel about the, the Shreveport music scene right now? I mean, right now, you got a lot of people that's out there trying to do their thing, but like, I mean, like, sad to say, like, we ain't used to nothing. Yeah. So, like, let's say, like, I'll use a quick example, like, see, other places, let's say Atlanta. You got Atlanta artists, they come out, say like if, if you if you coming out, or if you a hot artist, and I'm trying to come out, see, you gonna lift me up. You gonna give me a hand and pull me up, you know what I'm saying? We gonna do what we do, you gonna put me in the door. Next thing you know, I'm in the door. Yeah. I'm the next big artist, but Ron always said, it's so divided. If I'm a hot artist and you trying to get on, you gonna try to beef with me, or you gonna try to say something in a song to diss me, or some shit like that to try to steal my buzz instead of us coming together and me lifting you up. It's just real divided shit. What you think it'll take to, you know what I'm saying, bring the city together? Mm, man, to be honest with you, I don't think it's gonna happen. You don't think it'll ever happen? It's been so long, you know, yeah. it, it be like this, it's like, it be a lot of street shit that really be tied into the music scene. Yeah. So a lot of people that, that is doing music, all right, I might be doing my thing, and they might be doing their thing over there, but my people, my partners or my people might be beefing with their people. So yeah. we'll never be able to collab and all come together because there's always some street shit. The only people who really doing shit and buzzing out their heads, people that's really in the streets, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So street shit, I never allow some shit that go on. Rap, it's way deeper than rap, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's we rapping, we telling our story, we doing our thing, but this shit get way deeper. It's way more serious than us getting on here saying we saying. It's blood that been shed. People have been shot at it. You know, it's, it's really, it's, it's the streets. It's just we rapping. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I hear that a lot, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I interview a lot of people from Shreveport. They tell me a lot of the same thing, you know what I'm saying? And it's it's a lot of talent in Shreveport, you know what I'm saying? Like once you start tapping in a Shreveport artist and you tapping in other Shreveport artists, you look around, it's like a lot of talent motherfuckers in one city. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you feel like y'all get overlooked maybe some by the other bigger cities? Cause you got Dallas right there, you got Baton Rouge, you know what I'm saying? Like, do you feel like y'all get overlooked? I mean, of course I feel like we get overlooked for the simple fact that like now don't get me wrong, shout out to my city and everybody who doing their shit, but it's real one dimensional. Yeah. So like, the shit that a lot of people that's doing their thing, they only doing shit for the people that's in Shreveport. The shit they saying is on the people in Shreveport want to hear that shit. Motherfuckers in Dallas and Houston and Austin and other places, Atlanta and New York, these people don't want to hear this shit. We only talking about what's going on in the streets of Shreveport. So of course, it's going to get overlooked. People ain't trying to hear that shit. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? You just came home 35 months, you know what I'm saying? Like. And you look at some of the, 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 the bigger artists or people or people in general, you know what I'm saying, in, in, in the state of Louisiana uh, with the jail system, like, you know what I'm saying? Even Boosie said it himself, like, he had to move out of the city. Right. Like, how you feel about that? Like, have you already moved out of Louisiana? <laughs> yeah, I'm going. Yeah, I'm out here. Okay. I'm out here in the D. Once I touched down, when I touched down, the night I touched down, I stayed there for that night. And fuck with my little people and my family, and I've been gone ever since. Yeah. I left immediately. <laughs> Do you think immediately. if you're an upcoming artist in Shreveport that you can blow in Shreveport? 
You can blow in Shreveport for damn so. Yeah. Your boy, it ain't nothing to get a buzz in Shreveport. Hell yeah, but he ain't gonna, you gotta go. Okay. Got to go. Got to be more. Got to got to be on. Yeah. You know. So let's 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 get on this a little bit too. Like you've been you've been gone for for thirty five months. Like what was the hardest part about being locked up? Being away from my child. My son, he five right now. When I left, he was two. So yeah. being away from my child, I'm real close knit with my family. Being away from them, we were real tight. Yeah. Being away from the motherfuckers I love and just. Really, at the end of the day, the hardest part, though, was when reality sank in all the night, just, just, just like the fact that I got a chance of never coming home again. Yeah. That was the hardest part for me. Yeah. But, you know, it wasn't nothing I had to deal with it because I know what come with the life that I chose, but that's about the hardest part, though, being away from my family and just thinking, like, now, I might don't never get to hug my son again. I yeah. might don't never get to hug my mama again. Shit like that. Yeah. I seen the first day y'all vlog, you know what I'm saying? You hugged your moms when you came home, man. What, what was that feeling like when you finally, you know what I'm saying? When they finally let you out there, bitch. Like, what was the feeling like? And I was just talking to my brother about this shit. It like, <laughs> I be going back still watching this shit myself. Like, yeah. man, it feel like a dream. One of them dreams that I, I'm going to say this shit until it's over with. One of them dreams that I always had in this bitch. Like, yeah. like a dream come true. Like, <laughs> man, this shit real. Yeah. It's still surreal to me right now. I've been out like 50 some days and I ain't been out two months yet, but it's still surreal to me right now. Like, damn, I can get up and walk out that door if I want to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so, so let's, let's, let's jump on that subject while we on it. Like, you've been out 50 some days, not even two months yet. You already dropping music videos, you know what I'm saying? You already networking in Dallas. You already doing your thing. And I seen as well, you got a thousand songs that you written in jail. Like, mm -hmm. let's talk about that a little bit. Like when you was when you was locked up, was 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 the music on your mind heavy? Like you knowing what you doing when you coming home? Yeah, I, I ain't gonna lie on some, on some real shit. I got real deep, like in praying. But there's like in the situation I was in, I ain't had nobody to turn to with God. I couldn't turn to nobody else, you know what I'm saying? So it's to the point where I just pray so much and God got to talking to me. Like literally, like I mean, you sitting there talking. God got to talking to me, and shit, it was, he was confirming that I was coming home. So every day I woke up in that bitch, I carried myself like I was going home. I ain't carrying myself like I was finna get thrown away. I ain't carrying myself like I was finna go get twenty years. So I carried myself like I was going home. You had a conversation with God. He told you he was coming home before, every night. Before anybody else told you he, he was coming he, home. Not only did he tell it to me, he showed it to me numerous amounts of times. That's why I be like, the shit we sitting here doing, I dreamed about this shit. This shit we sitting here doing, I used to practice this shit with my sellers. Like, man, yeah, bitch, ask me some questions, bitch, you know what I'm saying? We in there be doing shit like that. Like, uh, like if you listen to the, like some of the shit I wrote, like yeah. when I dropped this tape 35 months later, uh, some of that shit I wrote in jail, and like, you might think I just wrote it, but I was just speaking a lot of shit into existence, because he Manifest. already showed it to me. Manifesting, that's exactly what it was, you know what I'm saying? So, hell yeah, rapping was on my mind. Like, that's all I could do. That's the only way I can express myself. I'm in the cell 23 hours a day. So, shit, this is the only thing I can do is, is write. Whenever something coming to my mind, whenever something bothers me, I can't do nothing but pick up that pen and paper and just try to vent the best way I can. That's all I can do in that bit. So let me ask you this, like when you was locked up, like when did you know you was coming home? Oh, uh, February. I was on lockdown for a big ass fight we had. I was on lockdown for 80 days. And I got a call from my lawyer February, like February the 7th, 2020. He's like, yeah, we got it. You know, gotcha. Oh shit, February, February, and Feb I'm just say February 2020, that's when I officially knew, like, yeah, yeah, I'm about to go in this bitch and take this time in like three days and bitch, I'm back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. That's hard, that's hard. And let, let's talk about, you know what I'm saying, the music scene before you even got locked up, because, you know what I'm saying, like I told you off camera, like, I was tapping into some of the old mixtapes, you know what I'm saying, you got the, I, uh, the song that I fuck with personally, you know what I'm saying, was the, um, Damn, the little partner. Is that what it's called? Ooh, that bitch hard. The little partner. I sent you that song that too. That bitch hard. That's a true story. Yeah, so let's let's talk about that. Like, 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 like that even type of music style. Like, and this was before you got locked up. This is when you're doing your mu your, your music shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, but before this, before anything, was was Shreveport showing you love? Like, was you getting buzz in the city? Cause I'm listening to these music, your tapes, your songs. Like, them shits hard. Like, was you buzzing in the city? Like, was Shreveport showing you love? I mean, like, they were showing me love, but like. How can I say? I always had love because I always like had a name in the city. So you know how they go. Like it's certain people that's gonna tap in just based on who I am. But like yeah. as far as like 
the attention that I'm getting now, it's a lot of motherfuckers that's tapped in right now that wasn't tapped in. So I'll say like, I had like a little buzz, but like, compared to now, I wouldn't even compare, I wouldn't even say there's no fucking buzz. I just say I was just doing what I knew that was for me. I ain't hell no. I wouldn't even, compared to what's going on now, I wouldn't even say I had a buzz before I went to zip. That shit wasn't nothing. The numbers that a nigga doing this shit now, in, in a week, I was doing this shit in three, four, five months, six months, you know I what I'm saying? I see that shit. So, like, I feel like the light on you for sure as far as Shreveport, just, you know what I'm saying, Louisiana music scene, period. Like, you really doing your thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, even the, 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 the beatbox freestyle and some of the shit that you dropped recently, it seemed like, like no rust. Like, you come home and you jump straight to it, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, like, you know what I'm saying? I, I definitely want to salute you on that shit, on the exactly. music shit. And when you go back and listen to it, you can tell, like, you already, you always really had a talent for that shit. Like, right. was you writing your music then? Like, you, you write your music yeah, and you right. punch in? I mean, I can punch. Like, I got a song that's going to be real, real crazy this summer that when I went in the studio, when I first come home, my dog was like, it's going to business, just go. Yeah. I can do that. But, but my rap style, I like to vent. I like to talk about my life. So yeah. I like to sit back and... Elaborate and just you know, yeah. I can do that shit, you know. But I like to really just get get this shit, everything I got. So I like to sit back and talk about some shit. So I prefer to write. You know yeah, what I'm and that's that's what really like made me gravitate to your music a lot. You know what I'm saying? If anybody watching this 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 interview, you know what I'm saying? Go back in and tap in on some of the older mixtapes. Like you you not always really just on the the rah rah. Like you can really get down and get in there and vent on some real shit and talk yeah. about some real shit. And a lot of people can't do that, you know what I'm saying? So I respect that about your music, you know what I'm saying? And I fuck with that shit heavy. Now, let's talk about, you know what I'm saying, uh, 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 YLA to go. I seen you, you you come home, you jump in the studio, YLA, YLA uh-huh. official. Like, what's that What's that relationship like? Man, man, dude, before all this rap shit, like, this is one of my real partners. Like, me and dude been fucking with each other since, like, we were 15 years old. Yeah. We, we linked up in high school, like, ninth grade. And shit, we've been really locked in ever since. Like, there's like a, there's like some out the mud shit before all this shit, before we even really took any of this shit serious. The nigga was, you know, just some young niggas just thugging, just fucking with each other, fucking hoes and playing sports and just yeah. running around doing what young niggas do. Yeah. So it's, it's deep in his music and his rap shit. That's hard. So, you know what I'm saying? You home, 35 months later, you said you got the mixtape coming out. You said you got a name for it already, too? It's 35 months later. What could we be expecting that? I'm gonna give you all different type of flavors of this shit. Like, ain't no, it's gonna be like, this bitch gonna be the total package. I'm gonna make you get the chills on this bitch. I'm gonna make you flash out on this bitch. I'm gonna make you wanna <laughs> go, go caress this baby, lay next to her and hold her. And yeah. his pain, his struggle, his flossing, his shining, his, his shake back, his everything. This bitch is the total package. I'm showing a nigga like, I'm showing, I'm trying to show the world like, all right, this is what this, you can go back and look, this is what I had going then. All right, now this is me 35 months later after all this pain, you hear me, after all this, after this setback, this is what this is. This is what I come up with. This yeah. Is what this is. Man, that's dope, man. I fuck with your music, man. I fuck with what you got going on, man. We're going to wrap this interview up real quick, but before we leave, man, if anything you want to get off your chest or talk about, you got the platform, my platform to do so. Is there anything you want to tell the people? Man, I just want to tell the people, like, Man, God is real. You hear me? This is my message to anybody out there might be going through anything, might got anything going on in your life where you low on hope and you feel like, damn, like, what I'm going to do? And, man, I'm going to tell you one thing. Just put your faith in God. You hear me? There's one thing I can tell anybody. God is real. Anything you, you get down and you pray about and you get a God, when you give it to him, leave it with him. That shit real. I'm living proof that prayers work. You know what I'm saying? No matter what your struggle might be, no matter what might be going on in your household, on your job, with your children, with your spouse, just in life, period, man, God is real. I'm living proof. Man. I ain't supposed to be sitting here right now. I'm supposed to be on the river right now, somewhere holding a knife in a cell phone. Yeah. But I'm right here in front of y'all giving my testimony. Yeah. That's so, hard, man. 35 months later, coming soon, man. We got Concrete K in the building, man. Yeah, Appreciate man. you for coming through, man. Whatever you need from Discover right. Studios, man, you already know you can hit us, man. Fucking right, it ain't number love, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate that shit. Straight on.